let's look at what that shortage and surplus looks like on our graph. So you know how to plot a supply curve, right? So this has to keep the uh, law of supply so that as the price goes up, supply goes up, and then our demand curve, and that you know that as price goes down, demand goes up. This point right here where it's green, that is going to be equilibrium because that's where supply and demand meet. And then at $1.50, that's price equilibrium. And at $200, that is quantity equilibrium. All right, so let's take that same chart and let's go back to the bananas that were in the previous example. So if the supply, or excuse me, the demand of those bananas at $3 is only 50, right? So people are only wanting 50 bunches of bananas at $3. But the suppliers, because they like to sell things at higher prices, are supplying 350 bunches of bananas at $3. So that means anywhere between 50 and 350 up here is a surplus. And if you'll notice, this causes a downward facing triangle, which means that a surplus is going to drive prices down until they meet equilibrium. And again, at equilibrium, 200 bunches of bananas will be sold at $1.50 and that is a surplus. So now let's talk about a shortage. And let's go back to the empty shelves that were in the previous video. So um, if we had 100 bottles of Pepsi supplied at 50 cents, because remember, when price is low, they don't like to supply a lot. But at 50 cents, we have 300 demanded. That means that anywhere down here, there's a shortage of Pepsi. And so anywhere between 100 and 300 is going to be our shortage. And if you'll notice, this is a up an, an upward facing triangle. And that's going to drive prices up. Shortages drive prices up until they meet an equilibrium price.